Okay, so we said that we could use the law of sines under three circumstances, and those were angle, angle, side, when you're given two angles and a side that is not between them, angle, side, angle, where you are given two angles and the side between them, and side, side, angle. First two we're going to talk about are angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle, because they're pretty straightforward. The side, side, angle, um, possibility is a little trickier so we'll we'll do that in separate videos but this first video here we'll do we'll look at the using the law of sines on the very straightforward examples of angle angle side and angle side angle so let's just talk about what the law of sines is first I'm gonna draw you a triangle here and we're gonna label it with the appropriate parts once again I've done a red triangle let's see let's get rid of that line and let's do, let's draw my triangle, here we go, here we go, all right, there we go, there, and one more side, here's my triangle, okay, we're going to label our sides, let's label them little a, little b, and little c, but again, the letters are not as important as the idea, uh, the opposite angle is the uppercase letter, so opposite side A is uppercase A, opposite side B is uppercase B, and opposite side C is uppercase C. Okay? The law of sines simply says the following, that the ratio of a side over the sine of its opposite angle is the same for all three pairs. The ratio of a side to the sine of its opposite angle is the same for all three pairs. Again, the letters don't matter much, but what you're going to be doing is setting up a ratio. A side over a sine equals a side over a sine. And we're talking about opposite pairs, opposite side with an opposite angle. Bear in mind that as we're looking at this formula, it is sometimes easier, and I'll show you when this happens, to have the sine on the top. I hope you can see algebraically, particularly if you cross multiply is probably the easiest way to see it, that this statement here is exactly the same as this statement here. If you, if you cross multiply both of these, you'll see that they're both exactly the same. It turns out that if you want to find a side, it's best to have your sides on the top. If you want to find an angle, it's best to have your signs on the top. Okay? Now, for angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle, which, the two, which are the two we're going to do right now, actually we're going to use the first version of this formula where we have the sides on the top because the first thing we're going to do is find a side. Okay, so let's actually do one example of each, and I'll show you how pretty straightforward this formula is to use. It's not that difficult, the formula, I hope you'll see. So let's draw a triangle. There we go. There's the triangle I'm going to look at. Make sure we connect it right there. There we go. Okay, I'm going to say that this angle here is 25 degrees. And I'm going to say that this angle is 35 degrees. And I'm further going to tell you that this side is three and a half units long. Okay, so solving this triangle is going to mean we need to find the missing angle at the top of the triangle and the two missing sides. And as you can see, I hope, what we have here is a situation where we have angle, angle, side. The side is not the side in between the two angles. It's not the included side, if we want to call it that. Okay? So let's take a look at our, um, our law of sines. The first thing we can do, actually, is find that missing angle, can't we? That's pretty straightforward. If we add 25 and 35 together, we get 60 degrees. And we know that the three angles of a triangle add up to 180, so this must be 120 degrees up here. That we can find pretty easily, pretty safely, and pretty quickly. Okay, now let's find the two sides. It really doesn't matter what I call these. 
I'm going to call them X and Y just because I like to stay away from the whole ABC convention so that you don't get confused by all the letters. Okay? The rule says as following. Let's go ahead and do A first. I mean, sorry, X first. Okay? The rule says that a side opposite the sine of its angle, so I'm using the side and opposite angle pair that were given to us in the problem. Those were our givens. Make that a better looking five. Equals x, which is the side we're looking for, over the sine of its opposite angle, which is 35 degrees. Okay? You can solve this two different ways. You can either cross multiply or you can multiply both sides by the sine of 35 degrees. Either way, let's go ahead and do it this way. I think it's the easier way, although some of you may find cross multiplication easier. Mm, I didn't leave myself much room here, but there it is. Okay, cancel, cancel. If you cross multiply and divide, you'll get this same equation on the right. You will get the sine of 35 degrees times 3.5 over the sine of 25 degrees. I'll leave you to do that on your calculators, but the answer that you do get here is um, 4.75. That's the length of that side, side x. Okay, so now all we have is one side left. Now some of you may say, well, can't we do the Pythagorean theorem? And the answer is no, we sure can't because this isn't a right triangle. You can't do the Pythagorean theorem if it's not a right triangle. Okay, so we're going to have to do the law of sines one more time. Now, don't use or try to prevent yourself from using any number that you've solved for in the problem already. Okay, it's a very good problem solving technique. Avoid using any answer that you have previously obtained through calculation. First of all, it may be wrong, in which case you'll just be perpetuating your error. Um, and it's, it's a rounded number. It's not an exact answer, so it's not your best uh, figure to use. So we're going to go back again to the original set of givens, 3.5 over the sine of 25 degrees. Now to find side y, which I've got right here, we're going to use the opposite angle for side y, which is 120 degrees. So the sine of 120 degrees. And once again, you can either cross multiply or you can um, just simply multiply both sides by the sine of 120. Either way, you're going to get y equals 3.5 times the sine of 120 degrees over the sine of 25 degrees. Either way, you're going to get that same um, problem. Do this on your calculator and you will get the answer. Uh, what do we get? 7.17 is what you get. You get 7.17 if you do that on your calculator. Okay. So that's solving a triangle that's AAS. Now I will point out to you, and you'll hear me talk about this in other videos as well, one really great way to check your answer is to look at the triangle inequality theorem. And the triangle inequality theorem said that in geometry, you should have learned this in geometry, that the side opposite the smallest angle is the smallest side. The side opposite the largest angle is the largest side. And then the one opposite the um, intermediate angle is also the intermediate side. So a little bit, of a little bit of a check. It doesn't do much for yourself quantitatively in terms of figuring out whether the numbers are actually right. But you can certainly get an idea that your, um, the, mag the, the, the relative sizes of your answers seem to be correct. Okay, now let's look at an angle side angle problem. I'm going to draw another triangle here. Oh, let's see. How about we do this? Oh, I'm back on green. Okay, let's try that again. Here we go. There. There. 
and here. So here's a new triangle. And I'm going to tell you we have a 40 degree angle here, a side that is 15 units long, and a, an angle that's 65 degrees. Okay? So this time, again, we're, we've got a different situation here. This is now angle, side, angle, because the angle's in between the two sides. Uh, I'm sorry, the side is in between the two angles. Okay? But it really doesn't matter. We're going to solve it the exact same way we just did the one above. So our first thing we should probably do is find that third angle. Not terribly difficult, right? Add the two angles that we have together. 40 plus 65 is 105 degrees. Subtract from 180, you get an angle of 75 degrees. So we've solved that part of the triangle. Okay, now we need to solve the two missing sides, and we're going to do the exact same thing we just did with the angle-angle side version above. Um, and just to be a little consistent here, I'm going to call this X and call this Y and avoid the whole ABC nomenclature so you don't get confused. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to use the information we're given, 15 over, and the angle that we got was the sine of 75 degrees. And we want to set up a ratio that relates that one or that pair to another side and opposite angle pair. In this case, x and its opposite angle, 40. Okay? Cross multiply or multiply both sides by sine of 40 degrees. You should get 15 times the sine of 40 degrees divided by the sine of 75 degrees, and the answer you should get is n about 9.98. I am rounding to two decimal places. So this side is 9.98. Now again, you, you cannot use the Pythagorean theorem because it's not a right triangle, and I wouldn't use the 9.98 that we just got because that could potentially be wrong, and you don't want to propagate your error. And it's also a rounded answer. So we're going to start again with the information that was given. 15 over the sine of 75 degrees equals, and now we're going to look at y, the other side, y over its opposite angle, the sine of its opposite angle, which is 65 degrees. When that's rearranged, meaning we either cross multiply or multiply both sides by the sine of 65, you should be getting 15 times the sine of 65 degrees over the sine of 75 degrees. And when you do that math, you should get about 14.07 degrees. Uh, excuse me, 14.07 units. So there, I've solved my triangle. I've got the two, three missing pieces, the two other sides and the missing angle. And once again, we can do our triangle inequality theorem to double check and make sure it's okay. My largest angle, 75 degrees, the, the side opposite it is the biggest side, 15. My next biggest angle, which is 65 degrees, the side opposite it was 14.07. And my smallest angle, 40 degrees, the side opposite was 9.98. So as I said, using that triangle inequality theorem is a nice little check to see if um, there's anything glaringly wrong with your answer. Okay, that's the law of sines for angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle. We're now going to talk about the law of sines for side, side, angle, which is much trickier. We've got some problems with that one coming up. Thanks.